Now that is a proper start to any morning. A smiley face bacon. <laughs> With three eyes. With three eyes. The best kind. And we got, oh, oh, it's gone already. Oh yeah, we're making waffles over here. Waffles. Waffles. And that, it's gonna be great. And then I gotta get take the truck to get serviced. Uh, we're gonna go into the walk-in clinic real quick. Uh, just to fill up some prescriptions. And then after that, I'm coming back home for a bit. And I've gotta to leave tonight towards Chicago. 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 That's what my baba used to call it. Yeah. I think I already told the vlog that once before. Chicago? Chicago. That looks delicious. Oh. Hey guys. So we're back in the truck here and uh, we're in Pembina, North Dakota. We didn't get very far today and I didn't vlog at all today either. Uh, today was a little bit of a uh, stressful day. My head was sort of in the air all day. Uh, my sister, my oldest sister was involved in a head-on collision on a two-lane road on her way home from work today. And uh, it happened about 5.30 in the afternoon and uh, we for the longest time we didn't know what was going on uh, we knew that the ambulance had come there uh, to get her and they were uh, treating her in the ambulance and uh, we got very fortunate and she got very lucky that uh, she had no serious injuries thankfully but I, I waited at home until we knew what was going on and how bad it was and then uh, she got moved to the hospital, the nearest hospital, and uh, I went down there to see her yet before I went to work. And uh, she got very lucky. I had a guardian angel watching over her. She only had scrapes and bruises, a sprained ankle, and uh, her car's totaled. But she, she got off a lot luckier than the other people in the accident. The other people uh, who hit her, who swerved into her lane and hit her head on, uh, were transported to Winnipeg Hospital by STARS helicopter ambulance. I don't know if you call them ambulances. or They got transported from the accident scene to the hospital by helicopter. So they were in a lot worse condition, but we did find out later on that uh, both the occupants of the other vehicle are okay. There was a mother and her teenage son, and the teenage son just had some scrapes and bruises, and the mother was in worse condition with several broken bones, but she's going to be okay too. So I didn't get very far today, just over the border, a little bit of a head start for tomorrow, and I'm running behind now, but that's okay, because uh, circumstances a little different. I mean, if it would have been worse than it was, man, I wouldn't even have left. I would have just left a message, called in, and said, sorry, someone else take it. But it sort of puts into perspective again when stuff like this happens, how fragile life is and how, how quickly it can be snuffed out. Thank God no li lives were snuffed out in this incident. It's just, our heads were just spinning. Britt and I, our heads, and on top of all this yet, we have uh, a water issue in our house that we realized right around the same time when this accident happened, just before we got the call that she had been involved in a head-on collision, uh, we had realized that our roof was leaking everywhere in the house. And uh, we've got some serious problems with our roof and we're gonna have to redo our whole roof come spring and summer. And uh, we're gonna have to rip off all the shingles, rip off all the sheeting. Underneath the shingles, they have old style sheeting because the house itself is really old and there's one by fours, what they used for sheeting underneath the shingles. And we need to rip all of those off and put newer, you know, four by eight foot OSB board sheeting on there and re-shingle it again because the roof, the way it's designed, uh, the snow piles on top of it and then it melts from the bottom because the attic is a little bit too warm. We have, that's another problem we're dealing with right now. And then it melts the snow, the bottom of the snow, and then it pools up uh, right where the, the, the house meets our uh, eave from the, the porch in the front. It has a different pitch and it meets there and the ice gathers up in there and it, it melts on warm days 
and then on cold days it freezes and it pushes up underneath the shingles and then on another warm day it melts and it's coming through the holes the the, the house has been re-shingled so many times in its lifetime that there's holes everywhere through all these one by four sheeting and the water is leaking in through these holes into our attic through all of our insulation through the drywall on the roof into our house in all kinds of different spots and the most infuriating part of this is I went up and checked it today and the previous owners who sold us this house we have it on paper I actually have all the lawyers papers I'm gonna be calling our lawyers tomorrow uh, they have it on paper saying that they did not that they signed that there was not not to their knowledge or how do I say this to their knowledge there was no leakage in the roof and they signed a legal document Yet, when I went up there to check on it, right underneath where the, the water was leaking, somebody who lived there before us had put plastic trays or little basins underneath there to collect the water that dripped through the roof so it wouldn't go into the insulation into the house. So they knew that roof leaked and they tried to hide it from us when we bought the house by putting these plastic trays underneath there to collect the water for long enough that we wouldn't realize that the roof was leaking. The thing is, we hired a home inspector and paid him, what, several hundred dollars to go in and inspect this house and climb up in the attic to make sure things like this weren't going on. And he approved the house and he passed the house with a full inspection. And now we're dealing with this problem. So I'm gonna to talk to my lawyers tomorrow to see what we can do because they sold a house and it's clear that they knew that there was leaks in the roof that they had even put in, put, put rain, the water collector basins in there, in the attic. They knew about this. And if the lawyers can't do anything, which I hope they can, then we gotta to talk to our home insurance and it's gonna be a really big, expensive job, and we might have to move into like our little cabin guest house thingy for a while, so that we can tear apart this house, because now that there's moisture up there, and we know that there's been moisture for a while, uh, there's a good chance that there's mold. And if there's mold up there, it's an even bigger project. Because we're gonna to have to, aside from changing the whole roof, the sheeting and the shingles. We're gonna have to scrape out all of the insulation and re-insulate our attic. And then who knows if the, if the moisture is probably trickled down in the walls. We could have mold in our walls. And this is what we were just coming to grips with when we got this phone call that my sister was involved in a head-on collision. And obviously that took priority. I don't care about my house when it's in comparison to my sister's life. Like sure, my house is an investment, but it's a material thing. It, material things, they come and they go. My sister, I have two sisters. But this particular sister, I've only got one of them. <laughs> There's only one rose. And so we, we dropped everything with the house and uh, started focusing on that and worrying about her. And thank God she was okay. And uh, man... So this is my vlog for you today, just sort of recapping for you everything that had gone on through this day. And I've still got to go to work, and we're going to Chicago, then we're going to Ontario, then we're going home. Oh, oh boy, and it's going to be a very interesting summer. So, uh, like I said, we're just spitballing ideas right now about what we're going to do. We're going to have to gut the whole house probably. And uh, we're going to move into the, the our little cabin got to do some renovations on that first but that's a smaller cabin easier to renovate right so we'll renovate that get that ready for us to live in it actually we might actually have to live in it for a couple of years while we completely gut the house because I don't want to go into big debt and do it all at once I just sort of want to fix it as we can right so I'd rather live in our little cabin for a while fix the house and not have to take out these big loans if we don't have to and just take our time getting it done. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't know. My mind is just spinning right now and that's just spitballing, just throwing out ideas of what I think. Because honestly, I don't know what's gonna happen. I, I've never had a house that leaks like this before. I've never had such a huge project like this just thrown on me. It's an old place, yeah. And we're kind of scared, we're kind of worried because insurance usually says with water damage from the roof leaking, they usually say, oh, that's just regular wear and tear. And the insurance companies don't want to pay out to help you out, right? 
So there's a good chance insurance won't even cover it. And uh, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I don't know. We'll do it. We'll fix it. Well, it'll just be over time. We're very fortunate that we have other structures that we can live in on our property. So we don't even have to leave our property. Uh, we still have our garage. Uh, we don't have to live in the garage, though. But we have the cabin. And I think that that will be our saving grace. We also have the, the camper, you know. But that, you can't live in it through the winter. Oh, see... My head is just spinning. But we're here in Pembina, North Dakota. Uh, right here. Just parked at the back of the lot. Just got across the border, really. Just barely into North Dakota, United States of America. And I'm going to go back there with the weasel. i got to clean up the whole floor, set up the truck. And I just threw everything in here and just took off because I was running behind already. So... Tomorrow we'll make a regular vlog uh, starting from here and see how far we get. We got to get to probably around Madison, Wisconsin. I'm hoping I can make it to like Beloit, but we'll see. So sorry there wasn't a regular vlog for you. I hope that uh, you guys had a better day than I did. And I uh, definitely hope you had a better day than my sister did today. Uh, I hope you guys are all safe. And... Once again, I've said it many times before, uh, just value your loved ones. You know, between, you know, Britt's, Britt's dad was in the hospital not too long ago. Now my sister was in the hospital, but, you know, silver lining to the cloud or whatever you want to say, a positive note, she got to go home for night tonight. She didn't even have to stay in the hospital overnight, which is amazing. A head-on collision and she didn't even have to spend the night in, one night in the hospital. You know, you know, thank God for our Canadian health care so that when accidents like this happen, it takes that whole stress off your mind. You know, she, she can go to the hospital, she can get fixed up, and you don't have to worry about that bill at the end of it. Yes, we do still have to pay for it. But you get what I mean. Everybody chips in a little so that when you have a loved one in need, they can get the health care they need in their moment of need. It's not a perfect system. It's not, but it... It helps a lot. My camera cut out on me there, uh, and I <laughs> ended up just going to bed. You know, you know what? I'm not dealing with this right now. So it's a few days later. I'm just putting this together right now and going over this footage and adding those uh, pictures of the crash over on top of this here now uh, there's a few more that I got just this evening uh, that I'm filming this I didn't have all the pictures or all the details right away as that was the night it happened and she was still in the hospital when I was talking to you there uh, I did get to go visit her though I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not but I did get to go visit her in the hospital and uh, she was doing fine and a few days later now she's got a really swollen ankle uh, hair in my eye She's got a really swollen ankle and uh, a few uh, damaged ligaments, I think that's what they said. She had gone to her physiotherapist or and they took a bunch more x-rays and looked a lot deeper into it, I guess, to make sure that there's no other injuries that they didn't know about. And uh, it's, it's going to be a bit of a road to recovery for her, but... Considering you saw the the state of that car, right? If if you don't remember from the beginning of the vlog, maybe I'll put it up on top of it right now again. And uh, it's amazing that anyone would have walked away from that alive. Never mind just just a sprained ankle with some damaged ligaments. Uh, I know I mentioned already before that the other people were uh, flown to the hospital via helicopter, and. Uh, We've heard also that they're doing better, that they lived, that they were okay, a little bit more banged up than my sister, but uh, they probably didn't have the safety systems also in their vehicle that my sister did, and uh, all of the airbags deployed, except for the ones on the passenger side, like along the window there, because there was no one in that seat, and she got hit on the driver's side, sort of, and all of the airbags, including an airbag by her feet that she didn't even know existed, that's probably what saved her from getting more damage to her feet but those airbags deployed all around her and saved her kept her right in place so that's a toyota corolla if you're wondering what kind of car that is and you know 10 star safety rating 
from me and my family right now and especially my sister I think because all of those airbags and safety systems and the design of the car really saved her life thankful to have her around still and uh, thankful that it wasn't worse so I'm gonna end this video here right now not much of a video today tomorrow will be a little bit better we're headed on down to Chicago I hope you join us hit that subscribe button and if you want to check out what my regular content is like go on to my channel after you subscribe, check out my past videos. There's about 2,400 of them, I think. <laughs> I've been doing this for a little while. <laughs> Take care. New video tomorrow.